all this stuff getting ready for the fucking convention. I, I just... I, yeah, that's this weekend, isn't it? It is. Are you super excited? I'm I'm super burned out at this point. I'm 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 okay. <clears throat> I have a flight tomorrow at eight. I get to Tennessee at eleven after crossing a time zone. So that's four hours right there. Then we have to drive another hour to get back to Hope's place. So that's five hours. Mm-hmm. Then we have to go shopping to get stuff that I can't bring on the plane with me, like, you know, wax paper and, and big bottles of shampoo. They don't let you can't bring on the plane. Why do you need wax paper? Uh, diffusion for lighting. Oh. You put wax paper okay. over the light, and it's not so glaring and effective. And you can't bring wax paper on a plane? Well, it's not so much can't bring on a plane as where would I put it? I have one bag for clothes and one bag for tech gear. Where am I going to put wax paper? In the bag for tech gear? That's a big thing. Of what, this, I don't have a room. No room. No room. So not. So I've got... How many pairs of shoes are you bringing? What? How many pairs of shoes do you one? have to bring? <sighs> You're so high maintenance. The, the pair that I'm wearing, those are the shoes I'm bringing. Um, and then, then, we, we kept, that after shopping, we have to go to bed, and then we get up at 9 in the morning, and we drive 12 hours from Bowling Green, Kentucky, to Washington, D.C., and then MAGFest. And then on Sunday, we drive another 12 hours back, and, and then Monday, I do the show. Hmm, that's, you're gonna be in a really good mood. Yes! <laughs> well, I mean, sometime between Sunday and Monday, you'll presumably sleep, I assume. I don't know. <laughs> you should work on that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, We should do the news. They're asking if I'm going to be at MAGFest. I'm not. I'm sorry, guys. No. I, I work retail, and... Weekends are kind of sacrosanct, and I, I will not be there, but, you know, have have an awesome time and stuff. We will miss. But anyway. All right, let's get this nonsense beginning. The intro works now. I'm so happy the fucking intro works. Here we go. That's good news. Each week... Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible shit, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And we've we've got interesting stuff this week. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, let's get the first story up here on the screen, because it's New Year's related. Happy New Year, everyone. Yes, Happy New Year. Happy last year of the world. And, um... Of all the ways to spend New Year's, this is uh, this is not the way I would have I would have chosen. Um, pirate ship runs aground with a hundred people on board. Now talk about your bait and switch headlines on this one. Um, and this is yeah, I believe, Tampa Bay, um, Clearwater, Florida. Clearwater fire and rescue crews responded to the Memorial Causeway Bridge on New Year's Eve where a pleasure craft, the Pirate's Ransom, ran aground with approximately 100 people on board. Before we get into the substance of the story, what's different between the headline and the story? It would appear to not actually be a pirate ship. It would appear to not actually be a pirate ship. I mean, I was kind of expecting this to be like Dateline Somalia. I know, right? You're like thinking Somalian fucking pirates crash the fuck. You're like, holy shit. No. No. It's just drunk people. It's just drunk people. You failed journalism. Stop doing that. That's that's a deceptive headline it for is. sure. It is. But, all right. Um, the, another vessel, the Island Time, attempted to keep some of the pastures ashore, also ran aground. Wow. 
All passengers taken to shore by fire, rescue, and police boats. One 77-year-old woman was checked out at the scene, refused treatment. No one was injured. Fog is believed to have been a factor in the ships running aground. So, New Year's Eve, you're on a boat. Shut up, all of you. Shut up. And you're just surrounded by bo Stop it. You're surrounded by booze. You're trying to put all of the booze inside of yourself. And it's foggy out. What could possibly go wrong? Didn't, didn't they check, like, the weather channel or some shit before they put all these drunk people on the fucking boat? Well, presumably, even if they did, like, they... You'd like to think they know how to run a boat in foggy conditions. It's not impossible. It happens all the time. Like, the shipping industry doesn't stop because it's foggy. Well, I love how the first boat runs aground, full of drunk people. And then the other boat comes by and says, we'll help, and then they run aground. Better question. How many of those people were drunk enough to start panicking and reenacting Titanic? <laughs> <laughs> like, hey. Looking for random pieces of shrapnel onto which to cling. Hey, we're, the, boat's, the boat's going down. And dumping you, their fiancés for better looking poor guys. You gotta draw me naked. We're all gonna die. You just did the boat. Draw me naked. <laughs> yeah. I, I can actually see that. That actually. Because. Yes. I drank a lot of booze New Year's Eve, but I was on solid ground. Except for the subway trip. Oh, since. Which I'll tell you, subway stairs, when you're really drunk and wearing five inch heels, not easy. Not easy to navigate. You okay? Oh, I'm fine. Because luckily, you know, I, I had. A nice boyfriend with me to basically keep me upright while navigating said stairs but had i not i would probably have some facial rearrangement right now because booze plus five inch heels plus stairs plus concrete there's a funny thing though when, when you're drunk and you're trying to do something important and you realize it's important like for example walk downstairs in heels you you focus like a laser on okay i'm gonna take this step Okay. Like, Not when you're doing subway stairs in New York City, because you have to do those really, really fast. Because you're trying to catch a train. Yeah. Well, and because New York City walking traffic stops for no one. Like, Jesus could be walking the streets and never be like, get the fuck out of the way, hippie. Like, you gotta move your ass. So there's really not time for concentrating very hard on each step. Like, they'll just be like, shove, there you go, now you're at the bottom, drunk ass bitch. Like, there's no mercy. You gotta, you gotta be on top of your shit. My girl was drunk over New Year's. I don't know if you saw her tweeting. I did. did I yeah. I was lucky enough to avoid the the sick part. She. So what did you I do for New Year's? I threw up in a bag. My girl, ladies and gentlemen. I love you, honey. Rock on, hope. Oh, oh boy! And speaking of couples, oh God. Galesburg, Illinois. Couple finds McDonald's drive thru is not clothing optional. Galesburg, Illinois. Two people in western Illinois are facing charges after pulling up to a McDonald's drive thru completely nude. Police say a 19 year old El Paso man, a 21 year old Galesburg woman, were released from Knox County Jail after being ordered to appear in court to face public indecency charges. Uh, the duo was still in the McDonald's parking lot when officers arrived just before 2 a.m. Police say the man was crouched over the driver's seat trying to pull on a pair of pants while his pasture was covering up in a blanket. The uh, pair told officers the late night fast food run might not have been a great idea. But they both still thought it was funny. So he had pants in the car. Yes. They, they apparently stripped off specifically to go through the drive-thru naked. How drunk do you have to be that that's your idea of fun? I know! Like, I mean, I drank a fair amount New Year's Eve and at no point was like, oh my god, you know, it would be fucking awesome if we got naked and went to the drive-thru. I don't know. And I don't think that's so much drunk. I think they were bored. 
that's it's like how bored do you have to be then this seems like fun yeah because you know they're still cow tipping guys get a hobby you can, you can do that naked if you really have to i guess probably i don't know I've never been cow tipping you might need some shoes for traction i don't see i was thinking something like macrame why did you jump straight to cow tipping because that's what you do when you're bored and live somewhere where there's nothing else to do. <laughs> you tip over poor, defenseless cows while they're sleeping. They presumably have the internet, you know. They, they could, could, you know. I say presumably. I didn't have internet till an hour ago. Okay, alright. But still, you know, they had like a car. Podcast bitches like me. They, they, you could have gone to Putt-Putt. They still have Putt-Putt, right? Yeah. Okay. Go go putt putt. Don't go don't go and don't go putt putt naked. Just yes, yes. You guys got me. I totally go out naked cow tipping all the time. Ah. Uh, all the time. Like that's when I'm not on the air. That's what I'm doing. I'm just doesn't? running around naked tipping over cows. Who who here? You know? Who here? And cannot... I can I can I can get them really really trusting because I'm a bull whisperer. So they really trust me, and they let me get up real close, and then. Bam! Down they go, and who? I just run off naked. And I have never made the news. Who among us has knocked despite over, this hair? Who among us has not knocked over a cow naked in their lifetime? I mean, really. Let he who has not knocked over a cow while naked cast the first stone. Exactly. Honestly. Don't fucking judge me. Right. Not a lot to get excited about in the nutmeg state. This one. This one is is. There rarely do I find stories that are just. Often it's hard to determine if it's crazy or stupid or a combination of both, but this one is the most perfect example of sheer, unadulterated, pure stupidity. It's 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 so perfect. It is it I I can't even what is this? I don't even hear. Here here's a story. You'll understand. Man, like building this up too much, like the joke in Pulp Fiction. Man tries to use one million dollar bill at North Carolina Walmart. Those don't exist. Yes. Please say I'm And I don't think any Walmart <laughs> would be able to change that. Please say a North Car Carolina man insisted his one million dollar note was real. When he was buying four hundred and seventy-six dollars worth of items at a Walmart, the fifty-three-year-old Michael Fuller tried to buy a vacuum cleaner, a microwave oven, and other items. Store employees called the police after his insistence that the bill was legit. The largest bill in circulation is one hundred dollars. Please stop making bills up to ten thousand dollars in nineteen sixty-nine. Yeah. Okay, he's a complete fucking idiot, but the balls on this guy. If you're gonna fucking counterfeit money, counterfeit money, that's real money. Like, don't make photocopies of Monopoly money <laughs> and call yourself a counterfeiter. Yeah, apparently the Monopoly guy was our 38th president. Like, yeah, no. Totally. He was president. I. <laughs> well, I mean, FDR kind of looked like him. No more hair. But what's beautiful here is there is no crazy here. No crazy. This is all stupid. Well, it depends. Maybe he honestly thinks that the one million dollar bill is in circulation. That would be pretty crazy. Maybe he's from, like, the other universe in Fringe, and that bill totally is in circulation over there. What I want to know is what president was on it. I, I do, yeah, I gotta know. Was, like, Jimmy Carter on it or something? <laughs> That'd be kind of, you know, just randomly, Jimmy Carter. One million dollar like, bill. So I, I, no, no, I, see, all right, you say crazy. I cannot, because this guy... What, the fact that he tried to use the million dollars to pay for like five hundred dollars worth of shit and tried yeah. to argue with them about it. Yeah. Like they're not even if it was a real bill, 
I'm thinking they're not going to change that at the Walmart for you. See, I would have been the magnanimous. Like they're not going to give you your nine hundred ninety nine thousand. 500 some odd dollars back i would have been the magnanimous bastard who said keep the change you still there yeah you why froze. can't you see me you'll froze again yeah. unfreeze unfreeze better hey, better okay. I, w I would have been the guy who said you keep that that's a little something for you honey yeah. <laughs> Cause I would just I would just hope and pray that that one guy at the checkout would be the one to go. Fuck. I can quit now. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, <clears throat> there are dumb people in the world all over, so it's possible. I just I think that would to do a I think it totally good. like jump up on the cash wrap and be like, fuck you and you and you and you and you. And then learn that it was totally a fake bill. And be really embarrassed. And out of job. But then they would sue that person and win a lot of money and not need a job anyway. Because this is America. I haven't ever been able to sue anybody. I, I don't feel like a good American. I've had cause to sue somebody. But we didn't do it. My mom, my mom was told that she really should have sued the orthodontist that I had as a kid. Because we had like the orthodontist from Auschwitz. I mean, fucked up my, my whole, my dental work royally. Like, I have two caps because he literally snapped my teeth in half, taking my braces off. So, these two guys, they're fake. Yeah. Um, and, it, like, it's, it's uh, yeah, there are all kinds of problems still. My teeth are still crooked, as you can see. I have rabbit teeth. Okay. But, you know. Whenever so, we should have sued that guy, but we didn't. Because we're more Irish than American, I suppose. Whenever you tell childhood stories... It's like Rose Nyland from the Golden Girls meets Saw. It's it's just it it's all messed up, man. Yeah, well, you know, my mom was a was a county employee and they don't have awesome insurance, so we had really, really bad orthodontist. And basically the way they the way they made good on it was the dentist there fixed the caps for free. And I just found out last year that he also fucked that up, so you know. Good times. Uh, all right. Um, more Florida shit here. Here we go. There we go. Um, you know, there's there's spite. There's a level where 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 spite crosses over into the the realm of douchebaggery, and this. <laughs> Police say Tampa man burned down house to keep woman from moving in. Um, he stood outside, covered in soot, watching the McDowell Avenue home burn on December 14th. On Tuesday, Kent Perus posed for his booking photo at the Hillsborough County Jail. Police say Perus, 48, told officers at the fire that, quote, I did it. He explained he didn't want a woman he was involved with to move into the house, so he set it on fire. Investigators found the single-story wood frame house been doused with an accelerant. He also told officers his dog, a film female pit bull, was still inside. Oh, no! Died. Oh, fuck that guy. Fuck all of this guy. Bruce taken to the Tampa General Hospital. Uh, he was charged with first burn down your own goddamn house. You're probably aware that there are pets inside. I Let the dog out. The house was a total loss of $72,000, which Perus was renting. So he didn't even fucking own the place. Really, I'm mostly angry that he killed the poor dog. I know why. What the hell did the dog, dog do? You? the fuck did the dog do? Poor dog. I just... Why? I hope he is forever haunted by ghost dogs. I who just... Who bump his legs constantly for the rest of his life and nobody believes him. I can't... I about wish... the ghost dogs constantly humping him forever. You know what? This... I, I, this can't be avoided at this point. I... I, I I'd like to... There's no real way to do this live, sadly. 
But um, I'm going to have to improvise here because th th this is is all there is to it. It. Are you playing the douche quick effect? Right I am. Now? Well, I, I've got okay. the song, but I there's no way to do the effect. Okay. I didn't know if you were playing that or being a real jerk and playing Who Let the Dogs Out, so I wanted to be sure before I yelled at you. No, I mean, because there, there's no fucking way to avoid. God, God damn, man. <sighs> that's just, that's a level of tomfuckery that should not and cannot be tolerated. How do you, let, let, let's just slowly break this down here let's put the dog part aside temporarily the idea that burning down a that, that you don't want the woman to move in I, i've had this experience when i was living in savannah not burning the house down stay with me stay with me when i was living in savannah i had a girlfriend we broke up very badly and she moved back to the West Coast. Then she moved back to Savannah and into my apartment complex. Oh, into I thought this... you were going to say into my apartment. And I'm like, no. you probably could have stopped that somehow. No, I could, but she, You she... probably could have not given her keys. But she, of all the places in Savannah, and Savannah is not huge, but it's a pretty big place. She moved into my apartment complex. Which was a little crazy, but, you know, I... Well, the, you know, she had to get close enough to steal your hair to work on that doll. But the thing here is, there, there was, I understood, I was the grown-up, understood there was, fuck all I could do about this. That's how shit works in the real world. Yes, but presumably, this was his, well, rental house. He could just not give her keys. Eh... He didn't want her to move into his home. Yeah. You could just be like, no, I don't want you to move into my home. You, just, you may not have a key. Well, you just say no. You just, you just say no. But now, that aside, what the fuck with the dog? And just, the fact that he was renting. How do you burn down something you don't even fucking own? Like, that's not smart. I... I just, this, and he just... He probably doesn't have to worry about her wanting to live with him now. Probably not. Also, the whole I did it thing. What, were you proud of this shit? Oh, I hope you, I hope you have a fun time in lockup, my friend. I hope you have a fun, fun time in lockup. An eternity of being humped by ghost dogs <laughs> is what I wish on this man. Because nobody will ever believe him, because only he will see or feel the ghost dogs. And they will just hump his legs forevermore, and no one will believe him. That is the curse that I lay down. And finally, some more sheer douchebaggery. Fortunately, no one was hurt in this one, but still. Douche, 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 douche. Arizona parents arrested over alleged Facebook images... Of duct tape bound children. Two Northern Arizona parents were arrested after photos of their young children allegedly be allegedly being abused for posts on Facebook. Anonymous Facebook user reported uh, reportedly alerted authorities on Wednesday after seeing two children, an infant and a toddler, bound with duct tape around their wrists and ankles. In photos posted to the social networking site, the children's mouths were taped shut and one was hung upside down by some exercise equipment. Here's, here's the best thing. They did indicate they were simply joking. That's not a joke. How is that? Where is that funny? Where is the fun? That's nothing is funny there. That's I I have no witty comments because there is no funny to be found. There's that's not a joke. You put your I will say I used to babysit a kid who used to have I know, here we go again. But it's relevant, I swear. 
she used to, you know, kids get into that, let me take off all my clothes phase. They get into like the, I'm in, well, kids do this. They, they have do. a phase when they they're do. very, very small, when they learn that clothes come off and it's fun <laughs> to take the clothes off. Partially because, look, I did it myself. And partially because, look, all the grown ups are fucking panicking. Yeah. Well, this kid liked to pull off the clothes and then pull off the diaper and paint with it. Like his whole bedroom. So, in order to prevent that, they used to duct tape his diaper on. They didn't duct tape it to his skin. They just wrapped the actual diaper in duct tape so that he couldn't detach the relatively weak diaper tape. So, like, when I started babysitting, um, they showed me the changing table. I'm like, why is there duct tape there? And I'm like, oh, that's so you can duct tape Matthew's diaper on. And I'm like, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. Yeah, so, um, I mean, there are parenting uses for duct tape, but uh, it should not and it should not bind your child. And today, he's a performance artist. <laughs> he was also really enamored with their industrial vacuum cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, yeah, I could understand that. That makes sense. But taping up your kids to put on face... On face, did they not understand? You, you put it on the Facebook, it's on the internet. And yeah. it kind to... Uh. I... It, uh, Did they think no one was going to say anything? They think they just, oh, people, yeah, people aren't going to get This is the problem, but this is the problem, and here we're going to do the damn kids today thing again, but this is the problem kids. with the damn kids today. They don't understand that the internet, once it's on the internet, it never goes away. Like, you and me, when we did our stupid shit, we didn't have the internet to put it on, so there's no fucking evidence. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I just hit that cutoff point, because... Right. My internet the kids coming up to coming. like I kind of feel bad for them because they don't get it yet that that shit never goes away Ever. and they put all the dumb shit they do on Facebook and then years later they don't understand why they're fucked like I kind of feel bad because they don't understand the long term damage they're doing because the internet is such a part of their lives and you know. You mean people who I don't know who actually don't take this shit seriously or looking at Facebook? Nobody told me well, that. You, know, you can delete. It doesn't really go away. Like, nothing on the internet no. ever really goes away. You can't delete the shit, because... No, there's always a cache somewhere. Oh, like, wait, there's there's the Wayback Machine. Mark Zuckerberg has his own fucking setup, like the movie Sliver, somewhere, and he is just looking at everything you do and probably beating it with, like... Grape jelly. You realize tonight, of the two of us, you have gone to the weirder places. I usually do. With ghost dogs humping and the grape jelly. Have, have, and, have you done and, this segment long? I usually do. Uh, it's usually me that's horrifying you. So, so what, what have we learned? Did we learn anything? All right. Um, we learned never ask no, you about your, your fucking dog on fire. Okay, that's a pretty yes. good one. Yeah, you don't it, want your girlfriend to move in. Just don't give her a key. We 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 learned um we learned never ask you about your childhood ever. Um, Facebook is forever. This this yes. is so if if you've got that picture of you stripped to the waist, hugging a donkey, and waving an American flag, um, delete it all you want. It's cached. Somewhere. That's how the internet works. Um, we've learned that if you if 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 you are going to be on a boat full of drunk people, um, weather.com, bitches. Weather.com. Yeah, maybe maybe get yourself a captain that knows how to deal with the weather. Oh shit, fog! Ah! Yeah. yeah. Or don't let the captain drink. Don't let you don't know. let the yeah, who's the captain? Said his name was Morgan. Oh, we're fucked. That um, if you want, if you want to have the drive through your way and your way is naked, hit the Burger King, not the McDonald's. <laughs> Burger King's more lax about that nude thing. Trust yeah. us. Trust us. Go try it. 
Go on. Go Have try. Have your way. If, you, if your way is with with uh, extra sausage, so to speak, it's in the slogan. Uh, and and finally tonight, um... And we learned that everybody should read the fucking FAQ. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Read it, learn it, live it, love it. We're very high-tech here on the show. And um, just because you can photocopy it does not make it money. Mm -mm. Does not that... It's not genuine. It's not... You, you can't transfer the genuineness of an item. The Believe me, if you could, <clears throat> I would be in much better state than I am. I would not have lost internet at all if I could just photocop some shit and be like, here, here is your money. It's not really that easy. If I could just make myself a million dollar bill and everyone would be like, awesome, you've got a million dollars. My life would be hell of a lot easier right now. I imagine pretty much everybody here could say so. Well, technically, you could do that, but that would involve, you know, some coding and the internet shit. And yes, but we've established how 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 elite my hacker skills are. Yes, that's because Sharpie. Yes. So 